Recording 45 miles north of the Bermuda Triangle, welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast with your good friend Jordan and your okay acquaintance, Keith. Oh, well, I gotta be just okay, bro. What's up with that? Don't Keith. You're fine. You're fine. Don't, you don't need me to validate that. Oh, well, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> well, you, you ain't right, man. You ain't right. Well, yes, welcome. Good to uh, be back. Uh, and like he said, this is the movie podcast from Golden State Media Concepts. And this is uh, this episode two. This is episode two. I believe so. Okay. Or 200. I can't remember. With, with Jordan, I never know anymore. There's a lot of episodes that we've done. Right, with right. Now. Okay, okay. And today's feature movies are... Well, Money Monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I do and, the second one? Yes, you, of course you can. Huntsman. The second movie is Huntsman. So we've. Well, come on. A Winter's War. Huntsman, Winter's War. Thank there you. you. Go. Sorry. <laughs> Not to be confused with Huntsman. So, Money Monster stars George Clooney and Julia Roberts uh, with Jack O'Connell, and it's directed by Jodie Foster. So, let's. Uh, we're going to get into that one. So, Money Monster. So. When I saw the trailer for this film, I was like, okay, I don't want to see this. This is going to be a cliche. Don't even want to go there. But I'm glad that I saw the film. I mean, there was some stuff that I thought was uh, predictable, but there was some other stuff in the film that was not. And so basically the plot of the story or, or the part, so the part that you see in the trailer is... George Clooney plays, what's the name, what, Lee Gates? Is that his name, Jordan? Lee Gates, yeah. Yes. Lee Gates has his own financial show. It's kind of like a, a serious show about your finances and what you should, inv- and what you should um, invest in. And it's also a little comedy. What's cool about it, watching him <laughs> do, do, his, do his intro on the show and movie, you get to see him dance and stuff <laughs> with these dancers. And yeah, he, he's, supposed to play a, on it. Huh? he's supposed to play a guy that's... You know, just very silly. It's lighthearted. It's fun. He's talking about he, – he's being like a generic sports show or just like any other thing where it's got the, the over-the-top graphics and the over-the-top visuals and everything along that line. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I really enjoyed that. I don't know if I was going to enjoy watching him dance and get really into the character, but George Clean did a great job in this role. That was a fun part. Guys. I think that might yeah. be one of my favorite parts of the movie. I think it was one of mine, too. It, it was. And – Julia Roberts plays basically his producer and what's Ms. her name? Patty Finn, yeah. Yeah. And she's serious and deadpan and she's they have great chemistry together. I forgot about that. I forgot how good their chemistry is together. So What was another time you thought they had Ocean's been? Eleven. Ocean's Eleven. She played okay. his wife. So You had that right? Yeah, you had that. It, in the it just hit me right before you asked. Like you were reading my mind, bro. Definitely. Ocean's good stuff, Eleven. Good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah they, they do. They have a great chemistry. It yeah. was fun to watch them. And uh don't forget there was also the Lone gunman Jack yes. O'Connell, who, who was, was played by uh, no, he's not played by he's uh, that's his Bud- name, Jack o- ba- uh, Budwell, yeah, yeah. So Jack O'Connell plays Kyle Budwell. So excuse me, that was my ball, my, my bad. Uh, yeah, that was both of our <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine, we both dropped the ball collectively, yeah. So basically, the, the gist of the film is yeah, Lee Gates is the financial advisor with a TV show that's kind of uh, tongue in cheek and funny and serious at the same time. Julia Roberts is his director who's ready to basically uh go to a different job she's kind of done with directing him for the most yeah, part there's a fed up feeling yeah. right right and then jack o'connell who plays kyle butwell is the disgruntled gunman who's upset because you know he lost money investing and that was because he followed lee gates's advice so yeah and you know that gets caught on live camera and i mean you, you, get, you get all that from the trailer so that's what's going on in the film that's the premise of the film so and it takes a lot of unexpected turns and twists. And, you know, when I saw the trailer for this film, I thought, okay, this is just going to be about some whiny guy. And, I, yeah, he was whiny to an extent, but it was about so much more than that. And I enjoyed the film because it wound up being a very, creating a, a, a very specific and crucial dialogue about what goes on with money and big corporations and how people can take advantage of you. And, uh, how do we feel about it? And it was just, it was, it was good. I enjoyed the film. Like I said, so he, I, I enjoyed the ending of the film because it, it had a, a twist that I didn't see coming that made it stand out and made the film unique. So yeah, I, I recommend this movie. I, I liked it. You liked it. Yeah. I don't know about unpredictable. I kind of thought 
uh, for me, I knew exactly where the movie was going. I knew how it was going to end okay. up. It was. It seemed very obvious. Now the ride it was okay. It was fun. It wasn't. Wasn't wasn't my favorite George Clooney movie. It wasn't my favorite, you know, Julia Roberts movie. And I, I guess that goes without saying. To me, it just kind of felt like a. Uh, I don't even want to. I don't. I don't. I don't know how to say it. Um, maybe even pandering. It just. Okay. It, it kind of felt like the Speak entire your truth, time. Man. It's, Speak I mean, your truth, bro. Mr. Lee Gates it sounds like Bill Gates to me. He, he's the he's the that, money that might side have been on purpose. Who knows? I, I felt like that is. And then Budwell's the the every man in it. It it kind of felt like, hey, look, everybody. It's not your fault that things are bad. It's the people up top's fault. And the movie's just basically kind of showing that. By the way, directed by Jodie Foster. We forgot to mention that. So, yes, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, basically... It's uh, we talked about everybody but Jodie Foster. Uh, Jody, thank you. Jodie Foster directed um, uh, catch, Money bro. Monster. Okay. Yes, so, and Lament uh, and The Beaver. Well, go ahead. And The Beaver. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it just it kind of felt uh, like... It, it felt like you can kind of see where it's going, and it just all, it was kind of a feel-good movie, and... You know, it's it's the movie that's most likely to have people in the audience going, "Yep, that's right. Mm-hmm, that's what happens." Okay, which so is th- actually what happened. I've never seen so many people in a movie theater go, "Uh huh, that's exactly what happens." Yes, sir. That's that's what did it. Like okay. just these constant nods of you know, this, okay. all this confirmation coming towards it. It felt okay. like uh, the movie was just there to say, you know, don't worry about it. Like it, it's it's made for the people. It's not. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, but. I'm not going to give anything away, but there were some surprises in that film. There, there, there was one surprise in that film that you didn't see coming. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm not talking about the ending, but I'm talking about, you know, when they're trying to make sure they're communicating with him properly and making yeah, sure that the, he gets the reached. movie was a lot about, you know, it's a hostage situation. Right. So it, it's at one, at one end, it's, it's a very action-packed movie, a, a very thriller kind of movie. There's, I mean, there's a guy with a gun in a studio. And, but then in the other end, it's also the whole... Very big message, the message that, you know, and I'm once again broken record. It's just people don't have a lot of money, but it's not their fault that they don't have a, money, a lot of money. And I may be quoting, the, you know, one of the people that sat next to me in the movie theater, but mm-hmm, that's right. <laughs> so, for, for, so for you, the things that I opened up with about how it was cliche and I didn't want to see it, those were things about the film that you didn't like, and that's and those those were the things that you ran smack into when you watched the film, Money Monsters. Yeah, it, it okay. did, and I right. you know I just I couldn't okay. I couldn't okay. love that on like an emotionally right. deep level, yeah. but I really I could still just enjoy watching. Okay. If it's on, I'm gonna be like, oh Money Monster. No, I, I like that, but see, I guess what I liked about the film was like George Clooney, he took himself so seriously. And then he found out the hard way that he shouldn't and that the people who are watching his show didn't necessarily take him that seriously at all. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I liked that. Wait, hmm? that, wait, you said that, uh, that he didn't take himself seriously. That right? he took yeah. himself seriously. I think that uh, his thing was that he didn't take himself seriously until he realized how, you know, how much of an effect he had. I, I think it, it really the, it kind of showed you him kind right. of not caring okay. and then him going, wow. This actually has a lot of ramifications. I think that he kind of represents someone that he's the middleman. He he does he gets part of the elite, but he doesn't realize the, what the you know the, rep, the ramifications are for you of know what he handling says to money people? for do, handling money. Period. Yeah. Okay. Well, so and you're right, but he's I think I'm right, but I think I'm right too because he he likes to think he doesn't take himself seriously, but then th- throughout the film. You know, I see where he realizes, well, you know, maybe you should have because people aren't taking you seriously. And maybe yeah. now you're a little disappointed about that. And now you think that and now you're like, OK, oh, this is serious. I, I, I messed up with this. You know, what, what's what's going on? I mean, what's really going on? I mean, I can think of a couple scenes that could possibly support your view. But I think the overall arc of the movie, uh, basically what I'm going to say is. I love you, but you're totally wrong, and I, I can bet my. It's all good. Yeah, so, no, I can bet so my so, bottom. So you're not going to watch dollar. this again. All right. I, I could watch. <laughs> I could watch it again if it came on and I was doing laundry, or if I had to, I was cleaning a room and I said, "Okay, that I need to put something not in the background." A glowing endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> It's but I, that's the nicest non glowing endorsement you can give a film. I did. I don't. I didn't come out of the movie theater feeling like oh, I didn't I come it. out of the movie theater feeling like I hated it. I just came out feeling like 
Blah. That's an experience. Like <laughs> I put together this puzzle. I'm not going to take it apart and put it together again. You know, I I, I can dig that, man. Okay, okay. I, no, I dig that. I respect that. And I so, think that uh, to go on, I I don't think that he had much of an idea of what he was doing as far. And I, I say that because his show was typically so silly, and at no part he was really focused on anything actual money wise. You know, so. It seemed like as you, there was, it the seems movie like kind of showed that people he was that, focused on money. Yeah, but it was a small part of the show. <laughs> it was. It, it was. He he considered right? it more entertainment. Yeah. I think he he's the movie kind of shows George Clooney as somebody that he he's basically the messenger, and he's just he's paid well enough where he doesn't ask questions about what he's messaging out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, I'm with you on that. Okay. I, yeah, I can dig that. Keith, I'm glad you can dig it. I'm digging it too. But for right now, we're gonna have to go to a commercial break. Hope you guys are enjoying. And when we get back, we are going to be talking about Huntsman, the Winter's War. Winter's War. We did in sync. All right, great. <laughs> All right. See you guys soon. Yes. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back, Keith. Welcome back, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Now we just talked about Money Monster and how, you know, Money Monster is a movie. Now we're going to talk about a Huntsman, the Winter (laughs) War is a movie. movie. Yes, yeah, so Huntsman, the Huntsman, the Winter War. Yes, the Winter's War. Winters. Yes, it's the sequel to Snow White and the Huntsman. Mm-hmm. They originally started starred uh, Kristen Stewart and Chris Hemsworth. Kristen Stewart from Twilight and Chris Hemsworth from Thor. Uh, Kristen Stewart is not in this film. This film is a prequel, prequel. but it's also a sequel. sequel. Yeah, so very groundbreaking. Yes, yes, Good I like that. I was digging that. So, yeah, so. This movie, Chris Hemsworth, the Huntsman, uh, Charlize Theron plays the evil queen. Uh, Emily Blunt plays her sister. What's her sister's name? Her sister's name is Freya. Excellent. And Chris Hemsworth, the Huntsman, his love interest is Jessica Chastain, who Who plays Sarah. Sarah. Yes, and she does a good job. She's also known for being in... Uh, a most violent year. That's a great gangster film that came out like a year or two ago. Yeah, she's was... been around for a while, huh? She, yeah, she's in a lot of great stuff. Um, Definitely. When I say a lot of great stuff. I mean, a most violent year was a really good movie. Yeah, so. it was. It was. So, who directed this film, Jordan? This was uh, Cedric Nicholas Troyan, and he also directed The Ring and uh, One Hour Photo, which a Robin Williams film that you gotta watch. That is a that's a dope movie. It's dark and awesome. Robin Williams plays a. Uh, the guy at the, at the photo booth inside the store, and he takes pictures of people from the developing, and he spies on them and puts them on his wall. So that's, that's interesting, the yeah. yeah. And Robin Williams alone, definitely. Yes, yes, the late great rest in peace. But yes, yeah, so this movie, so what did you think of this film, Jordan? Um, you know, if we're being honest, I thought I was going to like it more than Money Monster. Uh-huh. I didn't like it as much as Money Monster. <laughs> Jordan's on a roll today, people. He's on that buy a humbug tip. Okay, you know, we gotta we have to have some bad reviews. For uh, no, 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 no. We don't have uh, to. No, but um, <laughs> you ain't right. Huntsman. I, I liked. I thought the trailer was gonna be interesting. What I really liked about it, the first one was a lot of cool, you know, graphics, a lot of cool, interesting creatures, and it was fun. That that was the one thing I can really remember about that movie. If I'm you know Snow dementia White and mm-hmm. like the age of eighty. And yeah, I think right. of, you know, um, the first movie, the, mm-hmm. the uh, I'm going to immediately think, oh, those were cool creatures. Okay. This one, it was still, it still had that. It still had the, um, it still had a lot of cool new creatures to check out, like the, uh, the goblins and, you know, a lot of other, slew of other creatures to see. But right. really, storyline-wise, it didn't do it for me. It had less Kristen Stewart. That was an interesting choice. Yeah, she wasn't in it at all, dude. Yeah, yeah. There was absolutely no Kristen Stewart. Not even a cameo, so... Which, that was cool. No, I'm not complaining. That's not what ruined the movie for me. It just, I think what ruined the movie for me was, it felt a bit silly. <laughs> Jordan, how do you really feel? <laughs> <laughs> you 
it felt a little bit okay, like okay, all right, okay. You know, whenever a movie is done, That's you're like, wow, that was a great the movie. Film was silly. I don't. I've never heard anyone say it before. I'm, I'm glad you did. That was the first. So thank you for that. You I don't know if that makes that, me bro. a pioneer, though. I think that uh, it might be. You are a silly pioneer. Yeah, I mean that's a good thing, though. Pioneer of silly, Jordan. Silly pioneer. That's yes. a weird insult. Sir Jordan, yeah. pi- pioneer of silly. But um, on the round table. Go it, ahead. it had a great. It had a great cast, though. Nick Frost was in it. Everyone yes. loves Nick Frost, right? He, he plays a very a funny dwarf. dwarf yeah, <laughs> very funny dwarf. Yeah. Uh, Nick Frost is good in anything. Yeah, and there were a lot of good parts to the movie. I think. The sum of all those parts didn't really make a great movie, didn't make something I'm probably ever going to watch again. So we did tell you that it's a prequel sequel, so let's tell you about this, the, some of the, the premise of the film. So with the Huntsman Winter's War in regards to the premise, so here's what, what happens. Okay, so it's the prequel in the sense that it starts off, you see the evil queen um, and, and her marriage, <laughs> and you see what she does to obtain her power. And then you find out once she's attained her power that she, you know, loves the only person she really loves is her little sister, you know, and they have a typical uh, sisterly bond relationship, which is cool. Her and Freya. And basically she tells Freya that you have power in you and you need to let it come out. And Freya's like, nah, you're, you're, you're the one with all the power. Uh, that's not my thing. You know, Freya falls in love with this guy and the sister's like, I don't know. You shouldn't do it. You know, typical sister stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do you <laughs> and, have a sister? <laughs> yeah, I've got. Yeah, I, yeah, I've got two sisters. I bro. can tell. Yeah. Yeah. So, but um, so what happens is that eventually they have a falling out, and once the fallout happens, you know, the fallout is what turns Freya into the Ice Queen, and you get some, and, and you get a, a bit of that when you watch the trailer. So it's easy for me to say that part to you. Once that part happens, Freya's like, loves for suckers. I'm over this. My sister, you know, she was wrong. I, you know, I'm not feeling her anymore. So she's like, I'm moving out. I got my, I'm going to get my own kingdom. I'm not feeling you anymore. So, you know, you're my sister, but it's time for me to do my own thing. So Freya moves out and starts her own kingdom. And, you know, when she starts her own kingdom, she's just cold, literally. Like the power that she has with ice. And, you know, then comes the huntsman, you know, and he gets involved and it just goes from there. And it's got some twists and turns, but it was an interesting story. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, apparently the critics didn't like it, but I liked it because it was a prequel and a sequel. So by the time the huntsman gets involved, it, it turns into the sequel to the Snow White's Snow White and Huntsman film. So it felt like a ride at an amusement park to me now that you're saying everything out loud. Mm-hmm. I just remember it's one fantasy thing after this fantasy thing. Mm-hmm. And the the last movie, the um with Kristen Stewart, didn't really feel like it. It that it didn't feel like that to me. It felt like it didn't feel like an exceptional movie, but it still felt like just a very nice solid plot, just a, a very nice movie. Okay, well it's not I, a bad movie. And I can see how this film could be a little bit confusing because when I was watching the film I didn't know it was gonna turn in to go from a prequel to a sequel. But that's what I liked about the film. No, that's it, interesting it, and that's it, a it, cool it, concept. I don't yeah. I think like props to you for, you know, trying to do that. I don't think the movie turned out too great. I think that was <laughs> nice though. Uh, like I said, it's okay. It's, okay. it's like, you know, it's kinda like um Chris Hemsworth and um and uh, Jessica Chastain, you know, as they play the Huntsman and Sarah, they're just on this ride at an amusement park, and all of a sudden, Goblin pops up, or, you know, uh, Troll Dragon. I don't know. I'm making things up for lack of spoiler, but yeah. it's it's just one thing after another, and they just, you know, like, oh, scary. Okay, that pops down. Now the animatronic vampires come out, you know? Right, right. So, I mean, it was, you know, it was very interesting. I mean, like I said... I, I liked it. Fantasy without subs- substance. If you say that. so, all, all right. right. I, I, you know, I could speaking be wrong. the truth, I, I hear you. The dwarves were, were, were hilarious. Uh, their interaction with each other, the male and female dwarves, was very funny. And their out view on, on life and, and love and sex was hilarious. Yeah, they, so, they were hilarious. Nick yeah. Frost was in it. Yeah. So Nick he, Frost, I think they're dwarves. Um, he's a dwarf, yeah, and he has a brother, and they're, yeah. and, 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 yeah, and they're fun. They're, he makes a great dwarf. He makes a great everything. It was a great cast. Um, I've said great five times. But, you know, I mean, Charlize Theron, Emily Blunt, Chris Hemsworth, and Nick Frost. I mean, I know he doesn't compare with him, Chris Hemsworth, but to me he does. 
Well, I thought it was directed well. Like I said, I, I liked the story. Uh, I liked what they did. Uh, I liked the little things. I mean, there are things in it that uh, I didn't expect to see. Uh, I like it when you can surprise me, and, and it surprised me enough. I thought it was cool. Well, Keith, surprise. I would watch it again. You would? No, absolutely not. I'm sorry. <laughs> surprise again. Uh, you ain't right. But, um, ain't right. yeah, what, you, you would watch it again? or? Yeah, I liked it. I, I, I'm, I'm going to buy it probably. I'm going to buy both of them. I enjoyed it. That's I, nice. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, I only watched the first one and this one because of Charlize Theron. When I knew that she was playing the evil queen, because the evil queen before was this brunette. Charlize Theron was the pretty blonde. So I'm like, okay, let me see what she does with you, this film. You have a thing for Charlize Theron, huh? You know, why you got to ask me these questions, man? Well, I just, you've worked her into every conversation I've had with you since I've met you. So no, just, I haven't. That's the lie. Yeah. Oh, one That's out of, the lie. Four out of five, okay? Whatever, but, uh, anyways, Whatever. We'll, we'll talk about Charlie's Theron for some reason in a minute. Right now, we're going to have to go to commercial. When we come back, we're going to wrap up what we thought about Huntsman and Money Monster. Sounds good. Well, stay tuned, guys. <laughs> okay. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G smcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Oh, this guy. We're getting close. <laughs> right, we're, we'll be in sync one day. I'm Keith. That's Jordan. I'm Jordan. That's Keith. Um, we were just talking about Money Monster and Huntsman Winner's War. Yes. And we're going to go ahead and do a wrap up, what we kind of learned today, what we thought about today. Yes. So, Keith, what have you learned today? <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm in school now. Is this second grade? What's going on? Money Monster. What have you learned? What do you learn from Money Monster? You didn't care for the film. I liked the film. Uh, I enjoyed the film. I liked the plot twists uh, and turns. Uh, I liked the surprises that it gave me. Uh, Jodie Foster did a great job directing this film. We've got to mention that. She, she did. We didn't job. touch on that a lot, but the she movie was really directing. well directed. Yes. I, like, I, I know I said some bad things about it, and you know, Huntsman Winners War, the same. But I think, honestly, the directing, Jodie Foster, fantastic. Yeah, there was great symbolism that she used, utilized uh, very profoundly in, within the film. So, yeah, I, I definitely definitely recommend everyone going to check it out. And so. despite, despite having some problems with it, I, the fact that I, you know, I can say I didn't like that about it, I didn't like this, it just kind of felt a little pandering to me. Okay. I could easily watch it again. I think that's because the cast did a great job. It was really, you know, they, they performed well, and Jodie Foster did a great job, too. So yes. while the movie's not something that I would always be on board to, you know, buy and frame and, you know, just watch it over and over again until I, I memorized all the lines, it's still, it's good enough. It's good enough to where I would watch it again, and I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't be complaining about it. I would even, I would watch, if someone, if it's a choice between that and a lot of other movies I'd like, I'd still pick Money Monster. Just it's not it's not to the point where I'd say, oh, that was a really great movie. So uh, okay, do you make up your mind? So are you saying? You, I know what you. you I, I don't, I don't mean to sound or you're not confusing here. The film? There you go again, dude. I'm you're, saying I'd recommend it. I just it wouldn't horse, be my off first the bet. Horse. <laughs> off your high horse. It's 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 an okay movie. I just I'm I'm not crazy about it. Okay, so you still have to give it like. You know, it's one or the other, bro. You got I think on the pot or off the pot. <laughs> I think there's a middle ground, and I'm saying it's not great. I'd be off the pot if you made me say it. Okay. But so I think overall the movie could be Speak your truth. Speak your truth, bro. Forgettable, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> I, I still know what to do with that review, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm not still like, I can't do you want away. people to see the movie, yet. or you don't want them to watch the movie? <laughs> you know, there's movies that you would watch, and then there's movies that you would watch if it was on FX. <laughs> okay. This is an FX has got the movies. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take that as that you're not recommending the film, which is fine. I recommend the film. You don't. I'm saying I, I wouldn't avoid it with your life, but I, I'm saying so. You're if you're folding laundry and it's on, you'd watch it. Plenty of fish in the sea, but if that fish is in the while I'm doing laundry, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I didn't that's, know where that's, I was going with that. That speaks analogy. volumes, bro. No, I, I don't, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't. Not at all. So. But it's all right. All right, so I recommend that film. You don't. I, I can dig it. And The Huntsman Winter's War, or Huntsman Winter War. Either way, I think it's The Huntsman's Winter War, but you know what I'm saying. I recommend it. I think it was cool. I enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to get that one and the first one because it's a nice take on the whole Snow White fairy tale saga. So I, I dig it. So It was confusing to me. Okay. And by confusing, I mean I understood it, but it was... It felt confusing. It felt like it okay. felt like a, a ride that we just watched Chris Hemsworth and you know Jessica Chastain go through. Okay, I thought I thought uh, Emily Blunt playing Freya, playing the evil queen sister. I thought she did a great job. Um, she, I, yeah, she I think she good. almost stole the show. Charlize Theron was good in this film, and I'm not saying that because I'm crazy about nothing like that. We're not having that conversation right now. You, you know, but yeah. I you mean, found a way to bring it back up because she's in the movie, dude. Okay, okay. <laughs> what are you doing? All right, She's all right. in the movie. So she did a great job. She did an excellent job. Like I said, she was the reason why I went to see the film in the first place, and I wasn't disappointed. The whole cast was great. The director, what's his name again? Uh, Mr. Cedric Nicholas Troyan. Did a great job directing the film as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, it, it has a, it has like a, a dark feel. It has, it has a, like a dark vibe to it. But it's like a dark vibe that wants to be light, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I, I could see that. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it, it's like, you know, we're sad. This is darkness. This stinks. This sucks. Will things get better? Can things get better? You have to watch the movie to find out. But yeah, I recommend it. I so. don't think it pulled off its dark but light or, you know, light but very dark very well I, I think that might have been one of the problems for me okay but um, I, it did for me but okay better director cedric or jody you love to pit people against each other i tell you it's like apples and oranges with those films jody did a great job directing that film i think cedric did too um I, i'm gonna say they're tied they're tied okay so what about movie wise what what did you enjoy seeing more Hmm. I'm going to have to go again with being tied. Really? Well, maybe maybe Money Monster only to see George Clooney dancing with with dancers and putting on sunglasses and gold chain. So that was, George Clooney that was wacky so, kind of tilted oh, that, that one was on amazing. The I love it. Yeah, that was worth the admission. And that was fun. I enjoyed that, that one too. I enjoyed admission. that too. Yeah. There was uh, things to like about both movies, but as a <laughs> yeah. whole, I don't think that yeah. they made it where I would want to buy the movie. Yeah, that was yeah. Watching yeah. Watching George Clooney get funky was 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 yeah, that was worth the price of admission, and then just seeing what happens with the people who are watching the broadcast, how they react to it, and the, you know just how easily influenced people can be. Um, that's that's a that's a, that's a really good theme with that movie actually. I, yeah, I'm glad I just yeah that just came to me. Yeah, <laughs> should I write that down, Keith? Hey man, yeah, for po for posterity, my brother. Yes, okay. for posterity. Sounds good. Yeah, why not? I'll add it to your book of quotes. There you go. There's keepism. So yeah, y'all y'all hear about those uh, soon enough. Money monster. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> <laughs> buddy. Money monster. That that was um that was fun to watch. I, I I don't make me say that I'm I'm like I'm changing my mind. I'm not. I'm just there were good parts of it. Like I said, there was a lot of fun things. I wouldn't avoid it with fire. I, I could see it again. Once you, if it was, so would yeah, you say you gone. saw the potential in it and you wanted to like it more, but it just fell short for you still? Yeah, if I had okay. and if I had to pit them against each other, as I apparently love to do, which I guess I kind of do, yeah, yes. I, I'd say Money Monster it trumps Huntsman. Huntsman had a lot of prettier things to look at, just like the last movie. It had a lot of, you know, cool creatures, had a lot of cool effects, cool people doing cool things. And Money Monster it was more of that, you know, suspense thriller. They're two types. They're hard to compare. But I had more fun watching Money Monster. I had more fun being in the audience because I've never seen a movie that got so much interaction. Okay. Okay. There yeah. you go. Yeah. It was a good – yeah, my audience was okay. It yeah. was. It Did, was. So you like it more than Huntsman now? No, I didn't say that. Well, yeah, yeah, I did say that. All right, see, well, you guys heard it first. My words. Yeah, I did say I did because of George Clooney. Remember? Yeah, yeah. And the whole so. dance and stuff and all that. Him getting funky. That was that was that was the, worth the price of admission. See, it was. So, so Money Monster, 
Better than Huntsman. That's our official review on it, I guess. I, well, I recommend both. You see, you try to make it to a contest. I recommend them both. And you don't. That's fine. Okay. You that's know? fine. <laughs> that's fine. If it's fine with you, I guess it's You're such fine an with instigator, me. Jordan. Gosh. Money Monster's better. But yeah. I wish we can continue on with that. But it is time for us to go. This is our wrap up right now. I hope you guys had fun listening to us. Yes, yes. Keith, did you have fun talking to me? Uh, <laughs> yes, always a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Once again, you can catch us on uh, iTunes. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. And you can also catch us at gsmcpodcast.com. For us and just uh, a ton of other great podcasts. So That's hope, true. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, see you soon. Thanks again for tuning in, and then we'll see you somewhere out in space. You want me to? Space. Stop saying my line, dude. Right, sorry, buddy. Get your own, Biter. Eventually. All right. You guys have a good one. <laughs>